Well, look, first of all, I've got to say hello. Thank you all for joining us. And I know you've, you're doing this from all over the globe and all different time zones. So a huge thanks just for that. Uh, now you've got to speak up for yourselves. And I want to go around the houses very briefly to find out who you are and what your background is. Keep it short and tight, but this is really important. So Gladys, I'm going to start with you. Thank you very much, David. I am so pleased to be here. My name is Gladys Habu. I'm from the beautiful Solomon Islands, um, representing small island developing countries here as an environmental activist, because I really think the ocean is very important. And I am so humbled to be part of this UNESCO Ocean Decade. Thank you. Great, Gladys, thank you. Let's jump from there to uh, Edward. Tell us where, you're, where you are and uh, what you're up to. Yeah, well, thank you, David. Uh, I'm so happy to be part of this uh, uh, panel. My name is Edward Senkondo. I'm from Tanzania, uh, which is in the Western Indian uh, Ocean region. Uh, professional, I'm a fisheries research scientist, and I'm working with Tanzania Fisheries Research Institute. Edward, thanks very much indeed. Now, Karen, you're 17. Um, what got you involved in this sort of world? Hi, my name is Kyren or Karen Sung. I'm currently a junior in high school and I'm just so thankful for this opportunity from UNESCO and Heirs to Our Oceans for letting me speak on this youth panel and leading youth engagement. So let me turn now to Katerina then. Uh, you're in Brazil, Katerina. You're a surfer, I understand, but tell us a bit more. Everyone. Um, my name is Catarina Lorenzo. I am currently 13 years old and I'm from Salvador Bahia, Brazil. I'm also in Air from Airshow Oceans, as you can see here. I'm also a petition of the Children Versus Climate Crisis petition. And together with 15 youths, um, we demanded world, world leaders climate actions in the UN. I'm also a surfer and a climate activist, and I'm really passionate about the oceans and nature thank you well you certainly do it you're in it every day um thank you very much for that um and that brings me to alfredo and uh, alfredo i think you're in hawaii um and you have also quite a track record T tell me about yourself hi david thank you very much and thank you to unesco for this opportunity um I am actually in Hawaii, but I am originally from Mexico City. Uh, and you will think that someone from Mexico City uh, will have a hard time having a connection to the ocean, especially when I grew up, it was six hours away at least. Uh, but since the first time I got the opportunity to get a mask and a snorkel, I could never let it go. And that's what uh, I think a lot of people watching will be delighted to hear that you just can't let it go. You say you deal, you're working within fisheries. Just give us a little bit more of an outline as to what you're trying to do. So my, my work has been primarily trying to understand how small scale fishing communities, uh, seven meters or less of, of a length for a boat, uh, interact with the ocean, how they care for their own resources and how we can help them from a policy perspective to do that over the long term. Now, what is interesting, Edward, is that you also are involved in <clears throat> looking at the issue of fisheries. And I suppose one of the real challenges for, for all of us, and for you in particular, as this decade develops, is sharing knowledge. Uh, and the idea that perhaps we can have a forum where um, an expert in, in Tanzania is talking to an expert in Hawaii with a background from Mexico sort of tells the story as to what can be achieved, doesn't it? Yeah, well, uh, I'm also working with uh, fisheries here in Tanzania. And uh, as we all know, like uh, right now, uh, the world is uh, undergoing the uh, challenging uh, destruction of biodiversity, including the fisheries resources. So I think the ocean, uh, the UN, I mean, the ocean decade has come in a lifetime where we have to ensure that we make the conservation of these resources, very valuable resources, fish resources. So as an expert from Tanzania, I think we have to use this as an opportunity and we have to create a platform to work with different expertise, like uh, the, uh, the like of Alfredo from uh, Mexico. We have to share the challenges facing both countries or uh, both continents. 
and to see uh, what challenges facing these fisheries resources and to come up with a solution. So you're talking interestingly there about the importance of sustainability and resources, particularly focusing on fishing. But Gladys, I want to bring you in as well and, and ask you a question because you might well feel that this decade of ocean science should have started 10, 15 years ago. You know, you are facing, you are living the problem right now. Yeah, definitely. So I've I've watched a whole island come into complete non-existent um, Kale uh has been home to my grandparents for many years. And we also had the opportunity to be part of this island and what I had to offer. Um, but unfortunately now it's completely submerged underwater. And to, to picture, um, you know, our tiny Kale and then um, the thousands of islands that make up Solomon Islands and yet even more that make up the Pacific Ocean, um, our landmass compared to the amount of ocean that is around us is, is so tiny and with rising sea levels um, for us three times the global average I feel like um, this could take many more islands um, away from us and we we really have to act now um, otherwise we're losing more of our people's land and and that's really sad for me. Karen you can hear there that it's a it's an urgent need for um, Gladys is talking about a sustainable blue economy there we might talk about the ocean we want I mean what what is the ocean you want how does that look to you so my view of um, the ocean decade that I want to see is obviously more attention given to the ocean but uh, the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of the ocean decade is biodiversity and the rich biodiversity that we have in our waters. So uh, I'm basically talking about sustainable fisheries or marine prot protected areas, ocean waste and maritime transport, uh, seeing as so much ocean wildlife is being exploited every year, uh, ruining marine habitats and basically value in nature. I see that change in this field is definitely necessary. Right, yeah, absolutely. And we're gonna, I'm gonna challenge you as to how we get there in a moment or two, but that does sort of fit quite well, Katerina, with your own experience of how dirty the sea can be when you, you wanna go out and do your stuff. Uh, and I guess from that point of view, there's a bit of a crossover with what Karen is saying there. And I notice also you've already set up your own sustainability organization. So um, it's clear that your commitment is there, but do you have a picture of the, the ocean you want in, in 10 years time? I believe the ocean I want to see is the ocean where there is no pollution, ocean where humans, live in balance with it and not really just draining like a huge amount from it and wanting it to give like more than it can so i want an ocean that can live in peace and in balance with humans yeah now i'm gonna just put, put something at you i saw your t-shirt there about heirs to our oceans which is a, an, i think an american ngo which is doing what it can to, to pull youngsters in particular together, but from across the globe, because you can all stand up individually and say, we want this, but finding a, a way towards a sort of collective action, that's probably the key, isn't it, Katerina? Yes, I believe like, um, because we say we want something, but for us to get what we want, we need to do something. If we sit down, I'm sorry to say it, but it will not happen alone so believe it believe it or not like you are the one who have to do something it's it's not another person like don't wait for another one to do now um alfredo i want to come to you here because i know that you feel at your age already you're looking at a sort of almost like a mentoring you want to encourage and bring younger people on that must be music to your ears but but it's a very big symphony that you've got to play isn't it more than hope i am sure that this new generation for what i have seen is ready to tackle on it especially because the key element for me is that this is not a problem for ocean scientists it's not a problem for policymakers it's not a problem for engineers it's a problem for everyone whether you want to become an engineer a scientist a politician a communicator anything you want to become there's a role for you to play in some of these issues 
We are not going to fix, for example, illegal fishing activities just by telling business people to fix it. We have to become, the new generation has to become those next business people that are going to take more seriously ocean sustainability and tackle it from inside while collaborating with policymakers and scientists and engineers and other people. Yeah. So this is once again that, that issue about you, you use the word collaboration there, but sharing knowledge, sharing appreciation, that phrase ocean literacy that we hear so often as well, I think plays a role in there. Gladys, what, what would you say are the areas that could be done, should be done better, uh, particularly in terms of engaging y younger people at this point? It still seems like a lot is missing. And I feel like here um, we're not really listening um, to the people who are affected. Um, so young people, especially who are really, really impacted by climate change, sea level rise, I think um, they are the ones that we need to be listening out to more and their stories need to be told at a global level. Um, and that will engage more, more young people and help them to relate more to the ocean and, and that will give them that sense of care for the ocean. That, that's an amazing thing that it's like inverting the role of who should be role model, isn't it? I am struck, I have to say, um, I see that Katerina's got, got her hand up, so I'm going to give you the last word. I was going to say, Katerina, you're 13 and you're getting involved. Um, a decade of ocean science probably feels like a bit of a lifetime to you. And here are the rest of us thinking, crikey, she'll only be 23 when it's finished. Um, for youths um, like my age, older, or even like smaller than me to um, start taking action right now because in reality our time is running out and when an opportunity appears to you just grab it and go take action yeah well that's a great message to pump out there and i would say actually to all of us who can describe ourselves as somewhat older than you lot um you provided an education to us which is equally important at this stage so what i want to say now is to karen katarina to alfredo edward and of course to you gladys thank you very much indeed for sharing your thoughts on this special panel thank you very much